Yeah, so, so I'm from New Zealand, which is there, and at the moment I live in Austria, uh, which is there, and right now I'm in Pittsburgh, which is there. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't want to talk too much about theory, because I'm not very good at it, but um, just two points. I, th I believe deeply that perception is a fundamentally mechanical process, so um, we, when we feel things, we feel them because there's bits in our brain that are firing in particular ways. That's, that's the underlying ethic of my art. And um, so the experience of an artwork and my job as, as an artist is, so the experience, experience of an artwork exists in the moment when our perceptual systems fail. And the other day, uh, Zach talked about uh, the holy shit moment. And I think the holy shit moment is our perceptual systems failing. Um, so I used to make music. Uh, this was a band that I was in. This is about half of this enormous band that I was in called the Ascension Band. Um, we were sort of a noise, uh, electronic, uh, jazz thing. It was great fun. Uh, that's me with my little laptop, old dreadlocks. Um, I was the only guy in my town who was actually making music off a laptop at the time. Um, there's not much electronic art in New Zealand, which is one of the reasons I've been. Um, yeah, so, uh, so I started off doing music. Uh, this was a collaboration I did with a woman named Chris Sugru. Uh, the project is called Waves to Waves. And, So this is uh, intended as an outdoor installation, really. Um, the software is all set up outdoors, and, uh, and you go and you see it, and you can hear, you can see the grass moving around in front of you, and you can also hear the soundtrack, which is being composed uh, in real time. It's inspired by um, David Rockaby's very nervous system, which was a computer vision-based sound system uh, using a 6 pixel by 8 pixel uh, video camera. So. Essentially, what this is doing. So I'm also into doing stuff with light, um, as early days. Um, yeah, I was quite inspired by, uh, this is where the perception comes into it, because a lot of when we experience things, we're experiencing things because our brain thinks particular things are happening. Um, so this is a clip from Alien. 
uh, Alien 3, which a lot of people think is the crappiest Alien, but I really like it. <laughs> so here you've got this really interesting thing going on where um, the flickering lights on the different sides of Sigourney Weaver's face are sort of highlighting different angles of her face and giving you a sense of space. Um, there's also a, a lot of uncertainty and sort of tension that's built through that, um, which is what the, the Quake and Doom, a lot of computer games are built on as well. Um, so I really, I really liked how, how nervous this, this was. Um, and then there's this other scene here. The set design of this film is just fantastic. Um, so the thing that's interesting to me about this is you've got these little lights and they're zipping down this corridor and you really get the sense that something is traveling but it's just lights, they're just going off one after the other and it's your brain that's supplying the traveling. Yeah, so um, I turned this into an installation in Ljubljana. This is a gallery called Kapelitsa, which is an old church and So it's a completely dark space. So what's going on here is there's these sort of upside down tree structures and they're made of small LEDs and there's a sense of energy moving down and collecting in a flat, flat, uh, flat uh, plane on the bottom and then when enough energy is built up the plane pulses with light and you have that little pop noise and then they, they disperse back up into the ceiling again. And it's a, it's a generated system so each one's running on its own timer and when you're in there as an audience you kind of get the feeling that these things are talking to each other because you kind of have, you have one coming down and going bop and then going up again and another one coming down and going bop and then going up again and then the whole room's silent for 15 seconds and then all four of them come down it's like the first one says something and the second one responds and they all think about it and have a little argument about it or something So I did another version of this in uh, Vienna it was That's a lot better Trees So this is, this is up right now, it's in front of a cafe called Works Like Heart. And it just does that all night, which is kind of nice. The, uh, 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 the city asked us to restrict the hours because one of the neighbors complained, unfortunately. So it used to go on from 6 o'clock at night until 1 o'clock in the morning, but now it stops at 8. But yeah, it's stupid. Uh, yeah, so this is more hardware, hardware based stuff. I should mention everything that I've uh, shown so far has been developed with Open Frameworks. Um, so, uh, Open Frameworks for the vision processing or for the, the handling of the timing and everything. And, um, uh, uh, yeah, and PD for the, for the sound. Uh, yeah, so this is a little box that has a blue light in it and they just pulse. This is about playing with patterns. Uh, this was entirely hardware, there was no software in this. You turned your sound down? Done. Yeah, this. There's no sound with this one. And the video is terrible, so I'm just um, uh, This was a little collaborative project I did with an artist named Leah. Um, basically, she, has these, she makes these uh, visuals. Uh, she makes sort of interactive paintings, I guess. And so for instance, normally with installation she uses a, uh, a mouse. And so for this we build little hardware devices with um, sliders and buttons. Yeah. Um, and this is a project called The Appetizer, which I'm involved with, with another, another uh, New Zealand artist named uh, Julian Oliver. It's a um, augmented reality machine, it's like a, we call it the billboard uh, interception unit. So the idea is you program it to recognize advertisements and then when you're walking around in the world 
and substitutes artwork for advertisements. So it's turning the city into a canvas. So we, we had a workshop in Brussels. So this is the device here, battery powered. Um, we did a workshop in Brussels where we asked uh, people to come and, and make responses to artworks in their city. So this is a couple of them. This guy made this whole series of uh, pieces where he just, he just erased the advertisements. It's really nice. Is this how it looked in real time? Yeah, this is, this is real time. We had a lot of problems actually on that day because the sun came out and if anyone's done computer vision, you know that sunlight and shadows are just a nightmare. Uh, so we're thinking about only ever doing it in cold, dark, wintry places like Berlin. <laughs> uh, this, this was another one from the same, uh, same workshop. So that's me.